Welcome to this very special episode. Does any of you guys watch Safety Third? Well, I do, and sorry for stealing the intro, but today is actually indeed a very special episode, as today we're mounting the Y-axis stepper motor, which means for the first time ever, this soon-to-be 3D printer will move under its own power. This episode is also sponsored by PCBWay. Let's get cracking. These are the stepper motors I'm going to use on the X and Y axes. They are the cheap and nasty unipolar kind you can find in old printers, photocopiers and scanners and stuff. And these specifically were salvaged from an old electronic typewriter. They are almost identical except for the part number, both 56.5 ohms coil resistance and 24 steps per revolution. Now, I hear those of you with 3D printers of their own screaming at me that 24 steps per revolution is ridiculously too low, and these motors are totally unsuitable for the application. And you would be right, knowing that a normal NEMA 17 type stepper motor does 200 steps per revolution, 24 steps seem particularly underwhelming. So underwhelming, in fact, that even in the typewriter, these motors were used in conjunction with a gear reduction in order to get enough resolution. I admit, with that poor choice of stepper motors, if you can even call grabbing the next best motors a choice, I took the biggest gamble in the design of this 3D printer. Overall, I am confident a 3D printer can be made to work with these motors, though it might not be on the first try. Funny how this entire project is basically a huge experiment of how much trash can I build a 3D printer out of, because there are definitely better stepper motors to be salvaged out there. I'm of course going to reuse the gear reduction they already had going in the typewriter, and my plan is to mount it on the Y carriage like so. To move the carriage back and forth, we're going to use this absolutely amazing solution I saw for the first time in that old typewriter. We simply string steel fishing line from one side to the other, while also wrapping it around the cylindrical section of this big gear here in the middle. When the motor turns, it pulls itself along the line without the need of pulleys, timing belts, lead screws and any of that sort of nonsense, simply relying on the friction of the string wound around the plastic gear. I absolutely love this piece of 90s technology. I have no idea why it was ever abandoned in favor of timing belts, but I can only assume it has some sort of minor disadvantage we don't know of yet. Although, I can't imagine what that would be. Now, you might be wondering about the backlash I'm introducing with these gears, and let me tell you, they are actually really good quality. They mesh surprisingly well, so all the backlash I'm getting feels like only about a tenth of a millimeter, and that's at the full radius of the gear, including whatever play there might be between the axle and the center hole of the gear. It should be relatively straightforward to compensate in software. And as you'll find out soon enough in this video anyway, backlash is the least of our concerns with using these motors. Speaking of these motors, I can tell you're still skeptical, so let me show you the math. I manually counted the teeth on all gears and got an 8.5 to 1 reduction for the Y-axis stepper. 8.5 revolutions at 24 steps results in exactly 204 steps needed for one revolution of the big gear. Sounds pretty familiar, right? The cylindrical section that the fishing line wraps around, for our intents and purposes tantamount to a pulley, has a circumference of 41.78 and some change millimeters, which works out to 0.205 millimeters per full step. Now, that's not impressive. In fact, it's half the diameter of a standard nozzle, nowhere near enough resolution. That is, until we factor in our savior and concurrent enemy, microstepping. I'm gonna come back to why microstepping is also our biggest enemy later, but for now, let's just go with the savior a bit. 16th microstepping grants us the advantage of needing 3,264 steps for one revolution of the gear, which, if applied, gives us what I call the maximum theoretical resolution of our linear drive. And in that case, that is 0.01280122 millimeters per step. Pretty darn close to what you get with a regular NEMA 17 type stepper motor in direct drive on a 12mm pulley, around about 1.2 hundredths of a millimeter. Now bear in mind, this is only scratching the surface of how to select the right stepper motors for your CNC. I only ever did this little bit of napkin math, which was a lot harder to write down than to do, and decided to wing the rest. Cause the other 90% of how to do it properly, I don't even know. If you want to take stepper motor selection seriously, you at the very least also need to consider acceleration, torque in relation to RPM and microstepping, winding resistance, and then there's a formula for the ideal supply voltage which, as it turns out, depends on the inductance of the coils. 
And this, I think, is the reason most people just prefer to stick to the few NEMA standardized motors some smarter person calculated to be ideal for those CNC applications. It's just like with PCBs. You can either spend days to develop and etch your own circuit board just to find out it doesn't work because the stupid speck of dust got on your transparency in the worst spot possible, leading to a thin trace being etched through, and now you have to do it all over, or you could drop your design files on PZBWay's website to get great quality boards manufactured that are guaranteed to actually work. Provided there's no mistake in your design. PZBWay have short lead times and fast delivery, and currently they are offering lower prices on boards with 4 to 6 layers, so take the opportunity to get complex boards made for cheaper via the link below. Huge thanks to PZBWay for sponsoring this episode. And now, before too many people click away, because I'm again talking too much and doing too little, it's finally time to actually install the stepper motor on the machine. Well, that wasn't too much to do, was it? I ended up using the thicker 0.5mm fishing line. Technically, this stuff is slightly too stiff. You can see how it doesn't really like to conform to radii this tight, which will likely lead to fatigue and failure in the long run. So ideally, what you'd want to use is something much softer, like the one in the typewriter that was really floppy. I did actually order the 49 strand version, which should be soft enough, but what they sent me was this one with only 7 strands. Another huge advantage of using fishing line like this is, just like with timing belts, you don't need to worry about getting the alignment exactly parallel to the linear rails and stuff, it just flexes if it has to. 
Now, before we power this thing up, let me first resume my lecture from earlier and tell you why microstepping is our biggest enemy as well as savior when it comes to this printer. You see, microstepping just isn't quite what it's cracked up to be. In fact, it doesn't work perfectly to begin with, but on these stepper motors it works very poorly. Heck, you'd be forgiven to say it doesn't work at all. Let me demonstrate. This is a stepper motor I pulled out of a dead Canon flat bed scanner. It does 200 steps per revolution. Yes, those do in fact exist. It's a really good quality motor. In terms of accuracy, I think it should be pretty much equivalent to an EMA 17 type. To measure its micro steps, I've come up with a crazy setup. The stepper has a mirror on its shaft, bouncing the light of a laser pointer onto some paper on the wall, all while being driven in quarter step mode to do one micro step every two seconds, which is slow enough to allow me to put a mark on the paper for each micro step so that we can compare their size. It's quite impressive, all of this insanity is necessary just to spread out the steps to a discernible level. Frankly, I am deeply impressed with the accuracy and resolution of this stepper motor. Just a shame it's basically too small to drive any real CNC in direct drive. And here we have the result. Right out of the gate you can see the steps aren't the same size. From here to here is one full step, and the two adjacent micro steps are larger than they should be, encroaching on the two remaining increments in between. And it's not even the same with all the steps. Sometimes they're terrible, and sometimes they're almost perfect. Now, I don't want to set any false expectations. Considering we virtually mounted a 5-foot pointer needle to this thing, achieving even this slightly unequal spacing is an incredible feat of angular accuracy, and still worlds better than what you're about to see now. To test our crappy motors, we don't need no fancy lasers and stuff. I simply stuck it in a piece of cardboard and taped the minute hand of a clock to the pinion, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, draw a line whenever it does a step. Now this one had me puzzled for a bit. At first glance it looked like it was doing the exact same thing as the other one, but then I realized it's only actually doing 48 out of the 96 micro steps total, even though I had changed nothing at the stepper motor driver. In fact, one full step goes from here to here, and it's always grouping the first three micro steps into a single jump, and then doing the last one to the next full step position. Moreover, you can see all the smaller increments are always grouped around every other anchor point, rather than every step showing the same pattern like you would expect. That is extremely fascinating, and it's all down to how these motors are manufactured. And while you dwell on that, let's see just how jerky that ends up making our y-axis. This seems to be maximum speed right there. Can't go any faster or it starts skipping steps. Yeah, you see, this is now set to 16 stepping and judging by the ruckus it makes, you can tell it's really just doing full steps. And there you have it, micro-stepping doesn't work on these stepper motors. I kind of knew it wasn't great, but I honestly didn't expect it to be that bad. The only way to make it work with these motors, and I should have trusted my instincts and gone with that right from the start, is to use lead screws with a very fine pitch, i.e. threaded rod, and drive the stepper motor in full or half steps at most. Using threaded rod we get so much speed reduction, one full step of the motor results in only three hundredths of a millimeter of actual linear movement of the carriage. I kind of wanted to avoid using lead screws at all costs, since I know some of you guys will be disappointed if this thing ends up crawling like a sloth, but it seems we need to convert to lead screw after all. 
For now though, I am going to finish this printer the way it was planned, because A, I wanted to show you this wonderful technique with the fishing line, which by the way, if you use better stepper motors than this, should theoretically still be a great direct drive alternative to timing belts, and B, now I kind of want to try if I can print anything that even remotely looks like a Benchy with that abysmal 0.2mm resolution. And there we have it! I think we learned a lot about stepper motors in this episode, which makes for a good change since I feel like I don't learn much from making videos anymore these days. I also admittedly did a lot of talking, very much to the dismay of all those who just want to see me botch something together rather than learn anything. Definitely not sorry but it's probably gonna trash my viewer attention. Lastly, I just wanted to say, I put a 30 minute behind the scenes vlog style video about filming the most difficult section of my last episode up on my Patreon. If you have the means and want to support this channel more than by watching and sharing my videos, consider becoming a member. Over there you also get early access to new videos as soon as I'm done editing and engineering drawings for all my projects among other stuff. Okay, that's it. Bye bye!